Matt, I got to say, the price action yesterday was crazy. At one point, I thought it could get a lot worse, but the buyers stepped in. What's going on right now? Why are the markets behaving the way that they are? Yeah, there's no question that was kind of a, we had a severe drop just before lunchtime yesterday. Nobody seems to really know why, because there was no specific news that came out. It seemed like almost like there was a program uh, of some sort, that the sell program, that hit the markets, but things uh, bounced back. And I'll be honest with you, that's one of the concerns I have, is that, uh, you know, we've had these wild swings in both directions. Of course, some of these moves in Tesla and uh, 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 Virgin Galactic, et cetera, have seen these wild moves. And even a stock like NVIDIA, uh, it's only moved 33% but a 33% uh, rally in, in, since the beginning of the month uh, is, is a very big rally. And so these sharp declines, uh, we, we'll probably see more of those. I just think that, uh, you know, people are getting a little too complacent. Uh, this thing is to buy the dip. Well, dips used to be you know, 5% or 7% uh, dips in the market or even 3 to 4 Now it seems like if it's just 2 to 3%, that's enough for a dip. Uh, that's just a little too complacent for me, given what's going on in the world with the coronavirus. And even before the coronavirus hit, uh, you know, kind of stretched valuations, uh, and, and things that we were seeing on a fundamental basis that uh, I'm not sure really justify uh, the high level in the market right now. So, so Matt, then, look, you, I've, I've heard the word complacency tossed around quite a bit, and, and there's no doubt stocks continue to hover near record highs. They are in statistically overbought scenarios in, in, in many measures right now still. But what's driving the complacency? Why do investors feel, why do traders feel as though the path of least resistance remains to the upside? Well, I think it, a lot of it has to do with this, you know, this faith in the, the Federal Reserve has got the markets back. And it's kind of this win-win situation that people are talking about and saying, well, if the cor coronavirus uh, shouldn't be a problem. And, and if it has a problem the first quarter, it'll be made up after the first quarter. Uh, so you know, that's a win situation. But it's also a win because if it becomes a bigger problem, the Fed will step in. The problem is that history shows the Fed doesn't step in right away when the market just goes down a little bit. They wait for the situation to get at least uh, a little bit worse. And, and they... In, in this case, they have to because if they, they can't spend all their bullets uh, right away, if it turns out to be uh, a, a non-event, uh, if they step in too early, they're going to create a bubble, and they don't want to do that. And we saw that in, in their most recent meeting uh, minutes of their most recent meeting recently uh, that came out this week, uh, showing that, uh, that maybe they're 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 concerned about uh, risk asset pr prices being uh, elevated here and the, and, and the impact that might have. So my feeling is that if the Fed does step step in, uh, if the coronavirus becomes a bigger problem. Problem, it's going to be at a stock market that's 10 percent or more lower from current levels. So people, I think, need to raise a little cash here uh, and be prepared for uh, a kind of a fallout that, or a surprising uh, decline that people, we haven't seen in quite a while. What, what exactly will be the ultimate coronavirus trajectory here for markets? I ask only because people have pointed to precedent in the past about disease outbreaks and how quickly the markets bounce back. Why is coronavirus different or, or maybe not different this time around? Well, I think, it, well, number one, we can't know for sure how serious it's going to be. Uh, it looks certainly more serious than, than, than the last two that we've seen, whether it be the SARS uh, virus of 2003 or the H1N1 of uh, 2009. The thing is I, that makes it different for me. In both of those cases, yes, the market bounced back very nicely. But in both cases, the, the, the stock market was down more than 50 percent uh, when those viruses came out. So the market was poised and the market and the economy were poised to bounce back strongly. Now we're not down 50 percent. We're up 80 percent and the economy is kind of top, say topping out, but it's been it's mature. So the, fa the, the thought that we'll get this huge bounce uh, once this thing passes, uh, I think is, is a little uh, wishful thinking, in my opinion.